Deborah Kerr, a young Scottish girl with dreams as vast as the Highlands, embarked on a journey that would forever shape her life. From the hallowed halls of the Weber Douglas School of Dramatic Art to the dazzling lights of the silver screen, she emerged as a beacon of talent and grace. Born on the 30th of September 1921, in the vicinity of Glasgow, specifically Helensburg, Deborah Kerr entered this world as Deborah Jane Kerr Trimmer. Tragedy struck when she was only 14 years old, as her father, a naval architect, passed away, leaving behind a younger brother named Edward, affectionately known as Teddy, who later pursued a career in journalism. When she turned five, Deborah's family journeyed across the borders, settling in England. It was there, in the delightful vicinity of Clifton, near Bristol, that her educational voyage commenced at the prestigious Northumberland House School. Although an introverted child, her creative prowess shone through, capturing the attention of those around her. Her enchanting voice and graceful dance moves left a lasting impression. Recognizing her immense potential, her aunt, the renowned British radio performer Phyllis Smale, took Deborah under her wing and became her very first acting mentor. Deborah possessed an extraordinary talent that simply could not be contained. This gift earned her a coveted scholarship to the illustrious Sadler's Wells Theatre School in London, where she would continue her pursuit of ballet. At the tender age of 17, in the year 1938, she graced the stage for the very first time as a member of the Corps de Ballet in the mesmerizing production called Prometheus. However, destiny had other plans for this exceptional young woman. Standing at an elegant height of five foot six, she was deemed too tall to be a prima ballerina. Unfazed by this twist of fate, Deborah redirected her boundless talents toward her other profound passion, the captivating world of theater. In the bustling city of London, Deborah embarked on her journey through the realm of theater, starting with modest roles in repertory theaters. Fate smiled upon her when she graced the stage of the open-air theater in Regent's Park, catching the discerning eye of producer Gabriel Pascal. Recognizing her immense talents, he swiftly enlisted her to portray Jenny Hill in the 1940 film adaptation of George Bernard Shaw's renowned play, Major Barbara. The film, along with Deborah's captivating performance, garnered resounding praise, paving the way for her next endeavor under Pascal's guidance. In 1941, the cinematic masterpiece, Love on the Dole, emerged, once again showcasing Deborah's brilliance and earning her well-deserved accolades. Rapidly, she ascended as one of the shining young stars of British cinema. Deborah's meteoric rise continued, marked by a series of noteworthy films crafted during the tumultuous years of World War II. In 1942, she shared the screen with Robert Newton and James Mason in the compelling Hatter's Castle. Her exceptional versatility took center stage in 1943's The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, where she portrayed three distinct characters. Following the successes of The Adventuress and Love on the Dole, Deborah achieved further triumph with Perfect Strangers in 1945, I See a Dark Stranger in 1946, and Black Narcissus the following year a performance that earned her the esteemed Actress of the Year Award from the New York Film Critics. The dazzling allure of Hollywood had been casting its gaze upon Deborah for quite some time. Eventually, the moment arrived when she was beckoned to America, graciously accepting an invitation to sign a contract with the illustrious Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer. It proved to be a fortuitous decision, as Deborah made her splendid American debut in 1947, starring alongside the legendary Clark Gable in The Hucksters. Subsequently, her Hollywood journey continued with If Winter Comes, alongside the esteemed Walter Pigeon. However, this period marked a vexing chapter for Deborah, as she found herself often typecast as a refined yet prim and proper English lady. Similar roles followed in subsequent years, including Edward, My Son, in 1949, King Solomon's Mines in 1950, Quo Vadis in 1951, and The Prisoner of Zenda in 1952. 
With her enchanting presence and captivating performances, Deborah quickly became a rising star in the British film industry. Her breakthrough role in Perfect Strangers propelled her into the spotlight, and she soon found herself entangled in a world of fame and adulation. In the transformative year of 1953, Deborah was bestowed with the role of Karen Holmes in From Here to Eternity, a character perfectly suited to shatter her decorous and delicate image once and for all. Her portrayal of the alcoholic and adulterous wife resonated flawlessly, propelling her into a realm of authenticity. The remarkable performance garnered her a nomination for the coveted Best Actress Oscar. It was during this film that her iconic kissing scene with the dashing Burt Lancaster amidst the waves of Hawaii became etched in Hollywood folklore, ranking as the 20th most romantic scene in the American Film Institute's prestigious Top 100 lists. Continuing to explore the intricate layers of passion beneath romantic love, Deborah captivated audiences with her roles in The Proud and Profane and Tea and Sympathy in 1956. However, it was in the same year that she etched her name in cinematic history with her extraordinary portrayal of Mrs. Anna in The King and I, alongside the indomitable Yul Brynner. Her outstanding performance earned her yet another nomination for the Best Actress Oscar and bestowed upon her a Golden Globe Award for Best Actress. Deborah's string of triumphs persisted throughout the decade. She graced the silver screen in memorable performances such as An Affair to Remember alongside Cary Grant in 1957, Separate Tables in the subsequent year, and The Sundowners with the esteemed Robert Mitchum in 1960, which marked her final Academy Award nomination. Additionally, she showcased her comedic prowess in starring roles in The Grass Was Greener in 1960 and Marriage on the Rocks in 1965. Embracing glamour with finesse, she made a stylish appearance in the comedic James Bond spoof Casino Royale in 1965. In 1969, Deborah graced the silver screen one final time in The Arrangement, a movie that met with disappointing reception. Following this experience, she decided to retire from film. She expressed feeling caught between being perceived as either too young or too old for the roles offered to her. Additionally, she grew disenchanted with the increasing prevalence of explicit sexuality and violence depicted on screen. Nonetheless, Deborah continued to nurture her passion for acting through stage and television performances. In 1971, she delighted audiences with her appearance in The Day After the Fair, enjoying considerable success in London and embarking on a worldwide tour. However, her participation in Edward Albee's Seascape in 1975 garnered unfavorable reviews, resulting in a brief one-month run for the play. Nevertheless, she experienced great triumph in 1977 with captivating performances in Long Day's Journey into Night and Candida. Deborah's foray into television commenced with her first made-for-television film, Three Roads to Rome, in 1962. From then on, she consistently lent her talents to TV productions, remaining active until the mid-1980s. In 1982, she took on the role of Nurse Plimsoll in The Witness for the Prosecution, earning acclaim for her portrayal. Notable successes followed, including her participation in A Woman of Substance in 1983. Despite facing health challenges, Deborah defied the odds and made a memorable one-time return to the big screen as a widow in The Assam Garden in 1985. After her appearance in the television movie Hold the Dream in 1986, she decided to retire from acting completely, bringing a fulfilling and illustrious career to a close. Outside of her on-screen persona, Deborah led a vibrant and spirited personal life, a stark contrast to the restrained and prim characters she often portrayed. It is believed that she engaged in romantic relationships with several of her leading men, including Burt Lancaster, Stuart Granger, and director Michael Powell. Deborah embarked on two marriages during her lifetime. Her first marriage took place in 1945, 
to Royal Air Force fighter pilot Anthony Bartley. They were blessed with two daughters before their union ended in divorce in 1959. In 1960, she entered into her second marriage with author Peter Viertel. They resided together on a sprawling estate in the fashionable Alpine resort of Klosters, Switzerland. Additionally, Deborah owned a villa in Marbella, southern Spain. Sadly, in 2001, it was confirmed that Deborah was battling Parkinson's disease, which eventually confined her to a wheelchair. Tragically, on October 16, 2007, Deborah Kerr passed away in Suffolk, England, at the age of 86. Her extraordinary talent, indelible performances, and vibrant spirits continue to live on in the hearts of those who cherished her on and off the screen. Goodbye and rest in peace, legendary actress Deborah Kerr. Deborah Kerr.